Okay, this is Christoph Klugston. If you don't know me, this is a tutorial about how to get a dog out of Thailand. There are a lot of people who have questions about this process and have been talking about this, especially now. And this is specifically for 2020 during the Wuhan virus problems because things have gotten incredibly hard. A lot of people think, oh, you can, uh, Thailand and Cambodia, and the Philippines, among other countries in Southeast Asia, are effectively closed. And in Thailand, you can't get out. If people think, oh, you can get out, there's some flights here and there. Now with a dog, you can't. So, and theoretically, you can become an astronaut. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen. There are a lot of, there's a lot of people who are trying to get out, <clears throat> who wanna go back to the Europe or to Australia, New Zealand, or the United States or Canada. And they have questions about what is the process. So uh, this is a rescue Rex backed project more or less because we've been trapped over three months trying to get out. Our flights were originally canceled. Uh, the mighty, the mighty Thai Husky. Come here, Rex, come on, get up here. You get in the, get in the photo here, huh? if you will. I don't know if you can see him. Come here, Rex, come on, get over here. He's, he's, it's hot for him. He doesn't like it. He's not, he's not a Thai dog. We got the, uh, it's cooler than it usually is, but uh, he wants to just lie down. So what, <laughs> what is the process? All right, I'm going to go through the process. A lot of people don't know. And I'm going to talk specifically about the United States because the process is more involved if you're trying to go to Europe and it's almost impossible if you want to go to Australia, take a dog to Australia. It is very difficult. They make it very, very, very difficult. You're going to have to go to an intermediary country for six months, take the dog. People had been going to Malaysia, uh, but that's closed right now. Uh, Singapore, I think, is about the only option, or Taiwan, but Taiwan is closed to Thais right now, also. So there's a lot of problems. It's one of the things I'm talking specifically about uh, 2020. Now, this is June, middle of June. Now, will it open up? later maybe in august maybe but we're trying to get out we have been like i said for over three months and i'm gonna tell you about the process so what you have to do first is you got you find your dog <laughs> or you already have your dog and you have to take that dog it let's say that you have a dog from thailand or uh, speaking about specific instances you have a dog from thailand and you want to take that dog with you out now First thing that has to happen, of course, you have to go to the veterinarian and have the dog microchipped. And it is the international microchip that you have to have put in. The microchip is put in, it's injected, sort of like a, 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 with a big syringe into near the shoulder area and just underneath the, underneath the skin. That gives off an RF signal that can be read by a scanner. So in the old days, they used to tattoo inside the ears, especially military dogs were tattooed inside the ears, but now they use chips. So that way it's much more difficult to lose your dog, also have a dog stolen uh, and ownership problems are more easily clear when you have the chip. Because if the chip goes in a day after the chip, you get the rabies shot. The rabies shot is mandatory for the United States coming from Thailand. Now, if you have a dog from Europe, from Western Europe, you don't have to have rabies because shot because both the United States and Western Europe have been are rabies free. The United States has been rabies free for canines since the early 2000s. So a lot of people don't know that. So uh, <clears throat> you can get them in, although it's without the shot. So in this case, the dogs have to be four months old before they can get the rabies shot and flown. So let's keep it specifically for, for Thailand, bringing a dog from Thailand. So the dog has to be four months old, has to have the chip, gets the rabies shot, should have also the parvo, the distemper, uh, and a few other shots that generally are given in a five, in five serum injection. Now, the first rabies shot, you have to wait a month. So after you get the, after you get the, let's say that you get the, let's say, let's just use whatever, let's use January 1st. January 1st, you get the microchip put in on January 2nd, you get the rabies shot and the other shots. And so then on 
February to you can fly with the dog, okay? Because you'll get a passport, pet passport from the vet that lists his shots and when they were done and his microchip number. Now, on top of this, you need for the United States to have copies of actual papers in English, in English that say, I am a veterinarian, I am uh, licensed as a veterinarian, and I gave this dog with your name, the owner's name, and the dog's name, and the, and the breed, and the uh, description on such and such a date, this. Now, you get that uh, initially when you do the, the shots and the microchip. Get that beside, you need the passport, and also, and also the papers, okay? Now, before you leave Thailand, there are some steps you have to take. So this month has passed. Now you can fly. Now, if you live somewhere other than Bangkok, you're going to have to basically get to Bangkok. Although I know people that were in Phuket were flying dogs directly out of Phuket. That is not happening right now and may not happen for the rest of 2020. So the only place you can get out of is Bangkok. So if you're in the north, in Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, you'll have to get the dog down to Bangkok beforehand and basically use an agent. There are pet travel agents in Bangkok. Use them to facilitate the process because they do it all the time. Because when before you leave, there are some steps you have to take for the United States. Because Thailand is considered a screw worm infested country, you need to get the dog tested for screw worm and say that he is free of screw worm. And it's a last check also to say that the dog is in good health, uh, no problems. Now, when you get down to Bangkok, the dog will have to be cleared before you can fly. And this has to happen within three days, I think it is, before you fly. There's small windows on this. The last veterinarian check, by the way, is only good for 10 days. So you gotta do all this stuff. It's very time sensitive. Very time sensitive, makes your logistics insanely difficult, which is why it's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to get out of here with uh, Rex right now. And because of all these things that have to line up, transportation, getting all the vet, getting down to Bangkok, getting the agent there to meet the dog, and also to get the export license. Even though the government of Thailand had nothing to do with this dog, they want you to pay as if you bought the dog from them. You'll pay an export license fee, which also they will give a specific license saying that the dog is free to leave Thailand, that the dog is in good health, and they also will put where the dog is going to. This minimizes problems on the receiving end in the United States. Now, each state has slightly different rules for what it will take. Uh, most states, like if you're coming into California, there's only certain places you can actually get through with uh, dogs into the United States. On direct, you need a direct flight from somewhere to somewhere. Now, there are no direct flights from Bangkok right now to uh, LA or San Francisco or Seattle. It, going to LA, you're going to have to go. You're going to go through either Japan or Korea or Taiwan, but Taiwan is not going to happen right now. Uh, or Hong Kong. Avoid Manila. You cannot go to Manila for this reason. It is too hot. You cannot have layovers where it's that hot. It will kill the dog. The dogs are put in the hold. As if you can take them either as air cargo, which I do not recommend, or you take them oversized baggage, uh, which puts them in the cargo hold also, but the the cost is lower for oversized baggage. Now, lots of airlines want to have this plan. You don't just show up with your dog and say, I'm taking the dog with me. No, they have to have a, they have to work out the space requirements for the dog. And they are also supposed to be alerted that they have a live animal on the flight and on the connections because they need to move that animal in between plane to plane very quickly. And also from the plane out of the sun. So you do not go to Manila. It is damn hot all year round in Manila. You chances of your dog dying in Manila are high, very high. Some airlines will not allow you to fly that route anyway with, an, with a pet, with an animal. They won't let you do it. So that leaves you basically Korea and Japan. If you can get through Korea or Japan, uh, there are several different airlines that go through there. Japan Airlines is good, Korean Airlines, uh, Asiana. Uh, you want to try to get the layovers. Very short. Now, this there are some flights that are only a layover an hour or something. That is the best you can be able to do. You need those. That's another thing people don't understand. This is not like there are people. I, my friend got out of uh, Thailand a week ago. Yeah, he took a 50-hour flight going uh, 
going to Doha, sitting out there for 12 hours, and then to Amsterdam, and then you can't do that with the, you can't do that with an animal. You cannot. So this is why it's very specific to getting a dog out of Thailand. A lot of people don't know this information. That's why I'm giving it. A lot of people ask about it. And this is, you know, you can you can pay this back for this information by donating to the Rescue Rex fund as our expenses have gone up quite a bit for being here another three months longer. So uh, let me get back to where we are at. So you're going to get the export license and you're going to go to the airport three hours before your flight. Now, there are a lot of things to talk about with this because your crate, you need a crate that is airline qualified. Uh, basically, those are plastic crates nowadays. The dog needs to be able to stand up in the crate and have two, I think it's two to three inches clearance from his ears to the top. He's got to be able to turn completely all the way around in it and have no issues. Not, this is not the middle passage. <laughs> it's not the slave trade, you know. You're not putting into tight little boxes. You need a, a requisite size crate and they have to be approved. Now, the way that you close it, you cannot use locks with combinations or keys. Uh, basically, you put the plastic tie on it to close it. Uh, a lot of people have seen these crates now. It's, it's, not the, it's not the 80s when they started switching over. Can't use wood. Uh, there are steel uh, crates that people use that are sh have show dogs or protection dogs and they fly to different places around the world to, to enter those into contests. Those would cost a lot of money. Uh, it, the plastic ones work, but you've got to make sure it's, it, it is cleared. There are a lot of things you have to do. You have to mark up on the uh, on the crate, you also have to have uh, you have to have documents that are taped in a waterproof bag on the crate. You've got to have uh, all sorts of uh, declarations of this dog is your dog. <laughs> now that's why they use an agent because each airline is slightly different on that what they require, and they will weigh the dog in the crate on the day that you leave, and then you will pay the money to take them. Now. Uh, roughly speaking, if your dog is under 32 kilos, uh, that dog is going to cost you $200 for Korean Airlines right now, or for Asiana uh, on Japan, it's $400, uh, and other airlines, uh, KLM, which is a very, very good airline, now that's going the opposite direction, uh, KLM is very good for transporting animals, uh, in Amsterdam, they actually have a hotel, a, a pet hotel, that any uh, layover more than two hours, that all animals must go to that hotel. You get charged for that, but it's well worth it. They take care of animals well in the Netherlands for flying. But that's the very long way. Now, maybe if you lived on the East Coast of the United States, that might be an option for you to fly from Bangkok to, to Amsterdam, hang out in uh, Schiphol, that's the name of the airport, and then fly from there. But right now I'm talking about the other parts of the, not the East Coast, but the West Coast and the Central of the United States. There are some flights to Houston. Uh, Houston is supposedly not so bad to get animals through. Uh, Los Angeles is uh, reportedly really bad these days. Uh, they just want to cause problems, but that's where a lot of people have to go to, and that's where I have to go to. It's not my final destination. Uh, that's something else I should tell you about, is that once you hit the, the in entry airport and you clear your dog, you're not gonna be able to check him in on another flight. Most all airlines in the United States will not allow anything but service dogs. It's really racism. You wanna talk about racism. They will not allow any dogs other than service dogs on flights. So that leaves you screwed. You will have to drive. You'll have to rent a vehicle and drive, which is what I have to do. It's, and that's another reason why the costs are so high. Uh, I'm not, final destination is not California. So I have to drive from California, but okay, to recap, on some of these things. Uh, this is trying to give it to you in, in a very quick manner, but salient points being said, and you can replay the video. All right, you, you, number one, go to the vet, get a good vet that has done this before, knows the, quali the qualifications for entry. Now, if you wanna to go to Hawaii, there are, if your final destination of Hawaii or Guam, uh, it might seem it's like a shorter flight, but more stringent to get the dog in, there is some quarantine aspects there. There are no quarantine aspects. If your dog is good to fly from Thailand, has the rabies, 
uh, vaccination has the book, has all the health papers, has the chipping that these can get into California uh, or Washington or even Alaska, if you, that was your destination, because those are entry ports. Now, once you get in, uh, you had you had this all this done. Now, before you leave, again, let's get back to going through the order. So you had the dog chip, you had the rabies, you had the parvo, had this and that, you had the pet passport, you had the extra papers, you had the, the vet make single pages of papers that because the pet, pet passport by itself is not enough. If they follow a stickler for the rules of the U.S., they will say the pet, pass, pet passport is not valid by itself. They, you need the document saying from the veterinarian, I am a veterinarian, this is the dog, this dog is vaccinated, this dog is, is uh, declared healthy on such and such a date. Okay, and that has to be stamped. Now, when you, before you leave Thailand, Thailand's regulations, you must get clearance to take the dog out. Once again, it's not their dog, but they suddenly think it is. So you have to pay them, of course, money to take the dog out. They give a health certificate th themselves, and they also put on where your final destination is. So that when you end up in the United States and you give the customs the papers, they will see all of this is documented, and they will ask you, where are you going? Now, to get into California, you don't need anything else. There are some states uh, that if you fly into, now, Texas is also no problem to get into. There are other states, but if you're coming from Thailand, you're probably not going to those states. They'll ask for more problems. They'll give you more problems. But this is it. So you need this, this, the screw worm. Now, a lot of people don't know about the screw worm check, but it is there. I've spent months going back and forth with all the different agencies because it is not just customs. It's USDA, and it's also the state because each state has its own requirements. So you have to check with all of these. Uh, and make sure it's okay now and what they require because getting past one doesn't mean you get past the other. You can get past customs but not be past the USDAA. Now, in the United States, if you're flying with your own personal dog, your own personal pet, you do not need import papers. You do not need to fill out import things. Now, there are agencies that do this sort of thing and they're not cheap. Uh, now, if you are getting an adopted dog, then yes, you must have importation papers. But if you're flying with your own personal dog, that is your dog, that you will not resale, that you are not taking to the United States to give to someone else, if it is your dog and your dog alone, you do not need importation paperwork, okay? That, you gotta be very, very, very assured that this is how it is. A lot of people are mistaken about this because they confuse uh, adopting rescue animals as in your own dog, okay? Uh, so this has been succinctly the process to get out of Thailand in 2020. It is not easy. It is not cheap. Thailand is not uh, dog transportation friendly. You cannot take them on buses. The train, they must be in the, in the crate. The trains move very slowly unless it's uh, a short distance to get to Bangkok on a train, I wouldn't do it. You can hire a van. It's very expensive to do that. Uh, or you can uh, tie airways, which is not running. What's the best option to bring your dog through either as oversized baggage on Thai airways or air cargo? They don't run right now. So the limits of how you can get there are many. No air, as I'm saying, or what many people are using now and the rescue rescue shelters are using because there's a backlog of dogs trying to get out of this country that people have adopted in other places. And there's basically the rest of the world adopts these dogs and rescues these dogs, uh, not, not Thai people. They don't, they just don't do it. Uh, now, Rex is a husky. He is not made for the jungle. He was born here, but his, his DNA is husky. Uh, it mix. He's like an Alaskan Husky, basically. So he needs to get out of this weather. We need to get out of here. We're three months behind schedule and, of course, costs amounted. So here's where you can help us out by sponsoring the GoFundMe is Rescue Rex. Rescue Rex, I'll put it below this YouTube. But here you go. That's, that's the information, current as it is, for 2020 on how to get a dog out of Thailand. It is not easy. 
It's not the same as trying to fly by yourself. Lots of things you've got to consider. The, the route that you take, the plan has to be uh, done beforehand. You have to confirm that you can get the dog on the flights way ahead of time. And make sure you do not go anywhere where the temperature is hot. You cannot do that. Also, that's why you can also not fly into Phoenix or Las Vegas. Uh, there are some direct flights that go to Phoenix or Las Vegas. It will kill the dog. You cannot do it. Most airlines will not fly there because of that. So I want to make it very, very, very clear about what the realities are. It's not easy. It's expensive. Uh, you have to plan. And then even then, in the, in the case of now, it's very difficult. That's why we've been, our flights were canceled in March. And we, every month, we've been played saying that we can leave coming up. And then they list flights and they take them away. They list flights and they take them away. So right now, if you can get out, which I don't see it really happening before August, to be truthful, this is how you do it. It's still going to be the process in August. So there you go, Christoph Clugson for the Rescue Rex project. <laughs> Help us out, and I hope that you found this to be informative. Okay, uh, see you in some of my other videos and my other things that I do. All right? Okay, thanks a lot, everybody, for watching. Take care.